This past year might make you wonder if we have been cast back into the Old Testament of the Bible or question whether we are in the prophesied end of days. From locust swarms not seen in generations to wildfire, torrential rain and storm development at their highest recorded levels all over the globe. The steady stream of unfolding calamities reads like a Sunday school lesson or an excerpt from the book of Revelation. This is all, of course, before coming to our newfound pestilence, this novel coronavirus, which has swept across the world, upending our way of life, turning the global economy on its head, and leaving in its wake a mix of disruption and despair on the one hand, counterbalanced by determination and dedication to its defeat on the other. I, like most Belizean adults, had heard numerous times in jest that when the US sneezes, Belize catches the cold. Well, it was no laughing matter on that March morning when the country was advised that our bullet dodging days were over and that COVID-19 had finally been detected within our borders. I think all rational folk knew it was bound to turn up eventually, but I doubt very many of us realized the extent of its eventual and continuing impact on each individual, our families, our communities, and this land of ours. And so it was that we entered the fray that is the fight of our lifetimes. Observing the first few weeks of the effort to contain, to push back this new beast in our midst, was fascinating and frightening all at the same time. For myself, and I would suspect most, with maybe the exception of the hyper-partisan, it was a proud occasion to see the leaders of our country, the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, put party politics where it rightfully belonged on the back burner and come together such that our, national, our response was truly a joint and national effort, drawing from the best among us with the only agenda that matters in times like this at the fore and acting as a North Star of sorts. I am fairly certain none would look back and say things went perfectly and errors weren't made along the way. But all in all, I am convinced that the efforts of those at the helm and the teams around them will be remembered as having been equal to, if not better than the test placed before them. Our cherished democracy's metal must once again be tested in a few short weeks. And while we are only about six or so months removed, the glory days of our political leaders pouring each other water amidst the feelings of kumbaya in the face of an existential threat are now clearly behind us, and I contend inevitably so. Politics is, after all, a contact sport, and in drawing the contrasts that each hopes will separate them from the competition, things tend to get a little terse and at times worse. Still, I would hope for the sake of all of us that once the dust settles and the will of the people is reflected in the election result, that appeal which forms the end of this year's celebrations theme would come to hold true and that Belizeans would indeed unite for prosperity.